Hello, fellow guitar geeks. Today it is the Eliminator Germanium Edition, courtesy of Missing Link Audio. I'm going to play it for you with a variety of guitars and the Fender Deluxe Reverb, the Marshall SV20, and the Boss Katana. But first, here's a little track that I made demonstrating the pedal. <laughs> That was a fun little piece of music to make, and that really is the theme of this pedal that I've experienced so far. I haven't really tweaked the knobs yet, we'll do that together, but all I did really was just set them where they were in that demo track, and instantly I enjoyed the sound that came out of it. But let's, um, let's see if that continues. So here is my clean tone with the Fender Deluxe Reverb. <laughs> Also, this is the Heritage H150 Custom Core, a very nice guitar. Uh, knobs at 12. So, um, what I'm looking for in a Billy Gibbons tone, which is what this is based on, if you haven't guessed so far, is something that's fuzzy, hairy, and on the edge of being honky. And yeah, so far it has it, but I found that it needs the tone pushed up a little bit more. So let's let's mess with some tone knob. So the tone is not just a, a tone knob on this pedal, it seems to affect the volume, it seems to affect the the bite as well of this. So rather than just roll some t some top off, it seems to really affect both the gain and the, and the, and the volume. Um, so I, I kind of like the tone most of the way up. Also, it needs a bit more gain. Very quickly about the track that I that I made, the rhythm guitars that were panned left and right were more overdriven than the lead guitar. So I had this clean or well, cleaner tone through the telly for the lead part. So um that that's an interesting thing. It sent, it seems to jump out of the mix. I did no EQing on the guitars. It was just straight. There was a tiny, tiny, whiny, teensy, wincy bit of compression. Um, yeah. So more overdrive. Let's um, let's push some gain. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that's maximum gain and it's feeding back and it feels like it's loud. It feels like it's cutting through. It feels like it's pushing that tone that every guitar player wants to have to be heard above the band. So I'm going to back off the gain a little bit or, or quite a lot actually and see how we do some low gain stuff. In fact, let's switch to the neck pickup. Whoa, that is bassy. That's making my trousers flap. That's a lot of fun. Oh, it's making my shins vibrate. I've never had my shins vibrate or, or tickle in a, in a pedal video before. That's the first time. <laughs> it's quite nice. It sounds. It feels like um, something I should be paying money for. Right. Uh, let's back. There's so much volume there. I'm. I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit. Ah, oh, tickly shins. Right. Let's back that back off. Take my word for it. There's many, many, many decibels of volume available. Um, let's keep it in that low gain stuff and bring the tone up to where I had it. I'm just going to do some kind of bluesy things. Yeah, I'm not I'm not digging that. Um there are some pedals, some overdrive pedals where you can bring them down like an SD1 and get that little bit of hairy stuff. And that's that's not working with the Fender Deluxe Reverb. So let's switch to the Marshall um, SV20. You can't see it. There it is. Marshall SV20 Plexi style and see what that sounds like. Pedal off first, sorry. That works. So driven, driving an, an already little bit of a bitey amp uh, over the top works wonders. And then let's try it on the katana, see what that sounds like. So katana without the pedal. Kind of works well as well. Bit darker. Good pedal. It does that Billy Gibbons fuzzy overdrive very nicely and then gives you quite a lot of noise, noisy fuzzy stuff. I, I think it's time I switch guitar. Let's try the telly. Okay, I'm going back to the Fender Deluxe Reverb. And I think that's roughly where I had it for that solo-y stuff I did in the track. No, that's much louder. Um, I think it was about there then. It 
it's a good sound. I mean, the guitar still sounds like a telly, and the Les Paul still sounded like a Les Paul, which is what all good overdrives do, right? They just make your guitar sound more like your guitar and more like your amp. Um, I don't know what I meant by that, but... I like it. Without? Let's try that same thing through the plexi. Katana. This is coming in at 189.99 American dollars, available at Missing Link Audio. The link is in the video description, of course. The link is not missing. That definitely sounds like something someone has said before, but oh well. I did the ACDC overdrive from Missing Link Audio as well, and that was very cool. This is very different, of course, voiced for ZZ Top and, and Billy Gibbons. I've met Billy Gibbons, by the way, in case I haven't noticed. Here's a photo. So, uh, yeah, I've heard Billy Gibbons' tone right up next to his Magnatone amps, and he has a touch and a feel that is from the gods. This pedal makes me feel like him. I don't know if it makes me sound like him. It makes me feel cool, and I like that. Um, let's do many guitars, one riff. <laughs> was interesting. Um, I, surprisingly, I quite enjoyed the Vola, the metal-y Moore guitar. The, the output on the pickups is quite high, so I had a suite in between. And um, the output of the pickups made me play, it was very touch sensitive, so that the pedal possibly is more touch sensitive than other drives I've played. Let's, um, let's see if it does the Strat neck pickup sort of thing. Lower that gain down. There's more bass with the pedal on as well, so it's giving it more body. That is a good pedal. It is not just a Billy Gibbons style pedal, which it does that Billy Gibbons fuzzy hairy stuff really nicely, but it also does something else as well while still retaining that Billy Gibbonsness. So it's never going to be a clone or an SD1, but it certainly does um, give you some low gain stuff.
Yeah, that's a surprise. Um, I didn't think it would do this low gain stuff. I think I said that actually earlier in the video, but it does. Okay, let's have a look at the insides of the pedal to check the build quality, because I've been building a lot of pedals recently and I want to know how much better their soldering is than mine. Yeah, look at that. That's a really shiny kind of mirror finish. I think I should really point that out because that must be hard to do, right? So we've got like a, a screen print kind of thing going on the top, I think. It's it's a stickery kind of thing. But then the rest is mirror finish. Right, here we go. You ready? What's inside? Ooh, that is that is tidy. Okay, that makes me feel good. It doesn't look a million miles away from what I've been doing recently. But it's all on the other side of the on the other side of the thing. But I think I think right there, I think that's the germanium diode. Did I say germanium transistor at the beginning of the video? Like I almost knew what I was talking about. I meant diode. I'm sorry. So many people are not going to watch this part and they're just going to comment on that bit and I'm spreading false information. Sorry, it's a germanium diode and I'm pretty sure that is it there. Anyway, it's got germanium in it and it's it's there somewhere, I think. Why, why would they put them on the other side of the board otherwise? It's just to show that it is germanium, I think. Um, please let me know in the comments. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm doing my best. That looks like a tidy job. Um, it also makes me happy because my soldering is definitely um, up to scratch with concerns to this pedal. If you're the kind of person that needs to know what that op amp is, it's an LM1458N. And that is, um, I don't know. So that's an LM1458N, which I have used recently in a build, a fuzz build, in fact. Amazing. So yeah, missing link audio, tidy job, mirror finish case, sticker on the top, looks cool. Uh, very, very uh, ZZ top. I don't know if they can get away with that, but they have done. I like the pedal. Let me summarize the video. I had a lot of fun making the track at the beginning, so much so that when I plugged it in at the beginning before I turned the video on, I had to make a track. It's not like, I'll oh, just test out the pedal. I had to make some music with it. And that, I think, sums up this pedal for me. If you're in some kind of texas -y blues band, then try this pedal out. Otherwise, maybe try it with some low tunings. Let me know if anyone buys it and puts some low tunings through it, some baritone or some dropped G. That also might sound good. Uh, <laughs> oh, screw it, I'll do it myself. I was right, it does sound good, and I'm glad that I did that. That's even more fun. So, Germanium Eliminator from Missing Link Audio is available at the link that is not missing in the video description. It's $189, which I think for a circuit that is put in a box of this caliber is absolutely worth it. And if you're playing overdrives and you want that Billy Gibbons tone, there are quite a few options on the market right now. I know that I've played the El Hombre very recently. This is a different pedal. This sounds more aggressive than the El Hombre. The El Hombre is a little bit more polite. I will do a shootout of those two at some point in the future. This is the end of the video. You've reached the end of the video club to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite when you leave your comment telling me what you think of the Eliminator Germanium Edition. Please also include the phrase, ah, oh, tickly shins. And that'll let me know that you watched this part. And also YouTube will thank you for commenting something highly relevant to the Eliminator pedal. Right, there is a video over there that YouTube thinks you should watch next. If you haven't got time, just click the subscribe button and come back again later. Go and get the Missing Link audio pedal if you want it. There, there we go. That was some nice, stern assertion there. I will see you very soon. My name is Andy. I'm the Guitar Geek. Bye-bye.